Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's True Kai here, and in today's video, I'm going to be unboxing Sony's most budget friendly APS-C mirrorless camera. It's right here in front of me in all its glory. We have its spare battery right here. So, without wasting time, let's get into the unboxing. Let's go. To have the camera in the box and this is its kit lens which is the 16 to 50 mm lens zv18 here on this part of the box if you notice this tripod which is underneath the sony is transparent and i think what sony is trying to do here is i can tell you that you can use this tripod with the camera but this tripod is not included in the box so i see what you did there sony i see you this unit comes with the kit lens and it costs 799 dollars but you can also get it without the kit lens and it's going to cost you 100 dollars less which is 699 dollars We have the Sony warranty card, user manual over here. Please do well to read it because it's very important. It's going to teach you how to use the camera and make sure like you know everything about your camera, which you should do. And let's open this big boy. So over here we have the power adapter. Um, we also have another power adapter. So, but that's cool. They give us two power adapters. This has three pins. Oh, this has two pins. And then over here we have we have another one. How many? This one is kind of like at an angle, the two edges, which I don't think I'll be using. We have USB A to Type C cable. We have our battery. This is the Sony MPFW50 battery. It's a pretty tiny battery. It has a battery capacity of 10 20 million per hour. So hopefully it lasts us for some good amount of time when we're recording. Right here we have the dead cat, which is going to help to reduce wind noise. Um, if you don't have an external microphone already on your Sony ZV-18. We have the Sony camera strap. And then here we have... I think this is the outlet that you plug the power adapter to. We'll plug this to this. And then we plug this to our outlets. And then we plug USB-A to this. And then we plug this to the camera to charge it. Isn't it meant to be like a slot where you can put in the battery? I don't know. I don't think this is what it means for. I think let's still see what's inside the box. And then we have... That's pretty much it. So I tell me that this is how we go to charging it as well. I don't know. I'll have to figure that out later. But that would be weird. Which means that I have to plug the camera to, the, to this to be able to charge it. I doubt it should be an easier way out. There should be like a separate charger for it. Not needing the camera body to charge the camera battery. Anyways, the moment I'm all be waiting for, we have some ZV eaten. Oh! Baby boy, what's up? 4K. Wow, this camera is really small. This camera is almost smaller than the Canon M50. It feels a bit lighter than the Canon M50. One thing to note is that the camera doesn't have a viewfinder, so if you're a photographer, this might not be the best camera for you. This camera was made mainly for video shooters. We have the 16 to 15 mm kit lens, which is a very small lens. As a sensor, 4K APS-C sensor. It's not full frame, but do not underestimate the power of APS-C sensor. We have the battery compartment on there, yes, so it's open if you just... And then it's open. Let's put in the battery. It has the flip LCD screen. So you can flip it out. So if you're behind the camera, you can turn it this way. And if you're in front of the camera, you can turn it this way. So you can see what's going on. Set yourself up well before you start vlogging. We have the off and on switch here. And then we have the button that helps us to switch from picture mode to video mode and to s q which is basically slow motion. To the left side, we have a microphone port and we have a headphone port, which is really cool. Wow, headphone ports in the camera this cheap. That's really good. We have a HDMI port and I think that's a micro HDMI port. And we have a USB type C port. Over to the right, we have nothing. This should be the button to blow out the background and this should be the button to zoom out and zoom in. So let's put an SD card into this camera and switch it on. SD card goes in the same compartment with the battery. I kind of wish the SD card had its own separate compartment. At this side, it's probably because this side is nothing here, so 
It would be nice if they put the SD card compartment here, but anyways. So now let's turn it on for the first time. Let's go! Since the battery is there, so let's charge it up real quick. While the camera is charging, let me just unbox the spare battery. I don't think there's really much to this, but let's just see. It's pretty much the same battery, not too much to this. Yeah. Let me check if this one is charging because it seems like the one that came in the camera is dead. So let's And let's turn it on. Let's go. Why is it not coming on now? What's going on? Let me see if that about to charge the little. Now let's turn it on. It's on. So apparently it seems like the battery was actually like dead or flat or something. I don't know, which is surprising. But anyways, so I'm going to put it in English. Oh, so after allow this thing to charge, I'm just surprised that the battery is low. Let's charge up real quick. I also don't understand why I need the camera in order to charge the battery. So let me show you how I'm charging the battery for now. Exactly what I talked about earlier in the video. We have three components. This is the one that we connect to the power. Then we plug this to this Sony small device. Plug this end to this end. And then we plug USB type A to this end. And then we plug the type C to the camera. But it's meant to be like an adapter that will allow us to charge the battery separately, which is why I'm still confused on. So let's allow this to charge for a while. And we'll be back. Don't go anywhere. And we are back. So apparently you have to use the camera to charge the battery. Like you cannot, it doesn't come with like a travel adapter. Let me show you what I mean. This is the charger for the Canon M50. You basically just put the battery here and you open this and then you plug this to the power outlet. This is the power adapter for my Sony A7S3. You put the battery here and you plug the power outlet. But for the Sony Zv E10, for some reason, it decided that you need to use the camera body to charge the battery. So, even though I have a spare battery, if I want to charge the spare battery, I cannot be using the Sony ZV-E10 and be charging the spare battery at the same time. I have to use this and then when it dies, I have to go and plug it. And I just did a quick research just now and I found out that um, Sony actually sells the travel adapter, which is this kind of adapter which you can buy. Um, so, they don't include it in the box of the camera but they sell it so that you can buy. <laughs> Anyways, other than that, this is a good camera. Let me tell you why I bought this camera because it's it's still a good camera. I'm not going to allow this to spoil the experience. Let's just, just hold on. So the reason why I bought this camera is to hopefully replace my Canon M50, which is the camera I'm currently using to shoot this um, Aero talking head section of this video. I shoot Sony now primarily. My main camera is the Sony A7S III, which is the camera that I'm currently using to shoot this um, top down um, view of this unboxing video and having a B-cam, my B-cam is M50, having a B-cam from a different brand is a lot of work because different camera brands have different color signs. Footage from this brand will not look the same with footage from that brand and so when you're in post, when you're editing and you're trying to like make the colors to like match and look the same, it's kind of like, it's not an easy process, it takes time, it's, it's not the easiest thing to do. So. Because of that, I said, okay, it's time, let's switch completely to Sony. So the best thing is to stick to one brand, and that's the purpose of the Sony zv e 10 which is this camera right here. It shoots 4K, and there's no crop when it shoots in 4K, and it has good autofocus when it shoots in 4K, which the Canon M50 didn't have. The Canon M50 works best when in 1080p. When you try to shoot 4K with the Canon M50, there are a lot of setbacks. One, it has a very rich crop when you're shooting in 4K, and two, also the autofocus in 4K on Canon M50 isn't the best. So the Sony is going to help me fix that. And shooting 1080p isn't bad, but um, slowly it's kind of fading away. 4K is pretty much becoming like the standard now. So um, having a 4K camera is basically like future proofing your camera. So that's another reason why this Sony ZV-18 is um, it's really, really important. And also this camera also shoots in log. So this S-Log3 on this um, camera, this S-Log2, this S-Log3, I can't even if they have um, log, you're not able to shoot in log with the Canon M50. And the Sony A7S III, the only picture profile I use is S-Log Theory. So the fact that this has S-Log Theory also, even though it's 8 bits, I'm still going to be able to easily match the colors and get like the most dynamic range from the two cameras. Um, so yeah, that's also a plus. And one thing I just discovered is that when you're using the kit lens and you want to zoom in, you don't need to like zoom in 
this and out like this. I don't think that's only the right way to do this camera. This this switch, if I take it to the left, it's going to zoom out, and if I take it to the right, it's going to zoom in. So now let's zoom in. So taking it to the right, and it's zooming in, and taking it to the left, and it's zooming out. To the right, it's zooming in. To the left, it's zooming out. To the right, it's zooming in. To the left, it's zooming out. Let me quickly set it on a slope TV and shoot 4K with it just to show you the little difference between my M50D and this. So, this is the Sony ZV Eaton, our first test with it. We're shooting in 4K 30. How's the quality? Does it look good? Does it feel good? Are the colors looking good? Is it matching with my Sony A7S TV? We're currently on ISO 640. Um, the base ISO for a slope TV on this camera is ISO 500. So, I just, I think, like almost one stop ahead which is just from 500 640 iso 640 we are at f5 we can go as low as f4 with this lens but we're on f5 right now just so that more things can be in focus and i want one over 60 um shutter speed because we're shooting in 30 frames per second i'm a 24p guy don't get me wrong but for this video i want to try 30p i want to go the 30p route another cool thing about the camera that it's recording now there's like a weird color or an orange color i'm not very good with colors a red or orange um light that is just there which basically is letting me know that it's recording which is cool let me see if i can just show you real quick um so yeah that's it that's the sony zv e10 can you see me can you see that light over there that indicator is telling us that it's recording just underneath the sony name on the camera body and also if you look at the lcd screen you see like this red stuff at the sides at the corners of this display that also lets you know that it's recording so when you're recording you know you're recording you know you're ready to go let's go so anyways guys thanks for watching if you enjoyed this video please subscribe because in the coming um videos in the future in the next couple of weeks i'm going to be testing out this camera and i'm going to tell you if it's worth buying or not I'm going to, I, I kind of have a feeling that this is going to be the best budget camera that you can buy in 2022 because it's starting at a price of $699 for the body only and it costs $799 for the body and the kit lens which is pretty decent for a camera that can shoot 4K in 24p and 30p for a camera that is really small, it's actually really small and light for a camera that can shoot S-Log footage in 8 bits, 8 bit but still decent it's quite good. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Please, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. Like the video. Leave a comment down in the comment section. Come say hi. Let's talk. Let's go.